everybody, welcome back to the channel. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. Uh, <clears throat> on this video, and hopefully the next three or four videos, if not more, I'm gonna walk through and show you how I made my boat. But also, this is directly supposed to be for people who are learning how to do restorations of kinos um, and things to think about. If you are starting from scratch and um, you just don't know where to start, Whenever I started, I was really lost, and it took me a long time to gather up information, figure out what I wanted to do, how to do it, uh, and then do it through trial and error. So this is directly meant to try to uh, help anybody out there just to cut some steps and be able to get out on the water as quickly as possible um, and hopefully learn from some of my mistakes. All right. <clears throat> so in this video, we're going to be talking uh, a lot uh, without looking at the boat itself, but thinking about some of the things and the decisions that you have to make before you ever even start to do your rebuild. The first thing you need to decide is what material you're actually going to build your boat out of. Um, there's so many new materials that you can use that don't actually absorb water, um, but you can always go with the classic wood. Um, the only problem with wood is it does take on a lot of moisture and eventually you're going to have a heavier product than what you started with unless you're amazing at sealing. I don't know about you but if it's your first time doing this you're not going to be amazing at sealing. It's just not going to happen. Also there's a lot of um, cheesy shortcuts that you can take if you don't use wood uh, and you use another material. Other materials that I'm talking about would be something like a honeycomb uh, it is a plastic that's made into a honeycomb, and then it has a felt on either side that you uh, that will hold the fiberglass, uh, and you laminate each side, and then it makes it just as strong as wood. It, on the downside for using it for a ginu, it's actually really thick, um, or thicker than I thought that I needed. The product that I ended up going with uh, is called an Air 60 foam. And you do this the same way, or you treat it the same as you would uh, a honeycomb, to where you laminate each side and it actually makes it really, really sturdy. Um, able to bear a lot of weight, and you only have to have supports within two feet um, of your next support to be able to carry that weight. And we'll talk about supports later. Um, but that's what I ended up going with, and I don't regret it at all. I was afraid that it was going to take on water, um, so what I did was I did a test where I took a piece and I put it under water for a week, uh, pressed down, and it didn't absorb any water. No weight difference whatsoever, no leaking, so I felt really good about making as much of the boat as I possibly could and then reinforcing it with the foam. The next thing you need to think about is the kind of fiberglass that you need for the project that you're doing. If it's a minimal repair, you might want something that's called a chopped fiberglass. It's not an interlocking tight weave of long fiberglass strips, it's just a um, loose weave of lots of small bits of fiberglass. That'll give you the uh, thickness that you need without the strength that you need. The other thing, uh, the next thing would be a weave or a woven fiberglass that comes in large sheets, right? That'll give you more of a strength without the thickness. Um, and then the third would be a combo of the two put together. Uh, and that's what I chose to use on the entire boat, something called 1708. Um, and it ended up giving it thickness and strength. Um, and it's real nasty to touch. I'm gonna show you some right here. Okay, 1708 is great for big projects where you need a lot of strength, to where you're redoing um, older fiberglass that's still viable, but it's getting thinner. If you are um, <clears throat> remaking large areas, this stuff has got uh, the chopped on one side and then the woven on the other uh, in multiple layers, right? So you have actually have a woven that goes in one direction and then a woven that goes in the other direction, two layers of that and then a layer of chopped for three layers. That gives you the ultimate strength. So for me, that's exactly what I wanted. I was uh, I ended up laying um, one 16 foot uh, new strip along the bottom of the boat, 
and then one on each side and up the side so that there was a total of one complete new layer of fiberglass all the way down, but then the edges, the front, and the transom had multiple layers overlapping um, just to make sure that I had as much strength as possible because once I took down the old paint and the old fiberglass, uh, it ended up being really thin um, to the point to where I could easily just wobble it. The next thing you need to decide is the kind of resin that you want to use. And this is a huge debatable thing. I'm sure I'm going to get nasty grams from people, um, but I feel like the decisions that I made on the boat were good for me. They may not be good for you, and that's okay. And I want to hear your comments about that. So a couple different choices. You have a polyester resin. Um, the benefits of that is that it cures really quick and it fires fast. So if you're doing smaller jobs, this is a great way to be able to do a repair quick and get it back out on the water. Um, the benefit of that for your end product is that you can use a gel coat uh, instead of a paint, which looks a lot cleaner and it's a lot prettier. Um, and I don't know if you can actually use a gel coat on epoxy. Let me know down in the comments because I'm not sure. I was under the impression that with epoxy, which is our next kind of resin, um, you had to paint it after uh, because the gel coat doesn't always hold onto it like it normally would with a, a polyester resin. So the epoxy has a slower fire time and um, <clears throat> you can get it in two different kinds. You can get it for a fast fire for colder temperatures or a slow fire for warmer temperatures. I'm in Florida, it's 80 to 100 degrees um, and high humidity. So I needed something that was really, really slow because once again, I'm putting 15, 16 feet of fiberglass on at the same time in one long roll. Um, and I needed to be able to have that working time so that I wouldn't be basically mushing around and it's done before I'm even a quarter of the way through with the boat. So this is stuff they use, um, the Total Boat Epoxy Resin and the uh, Slow Resin Hardener. Um, and you just follow the directions. People say that epoxy is, is more expensive than the uh, polyester resin, and it is, but it's not actually that bad once you calculate in the amount um, that you're actually adding with the hardener um, to make it fire, the two parts. They even out to where it's not really that bad. And you can, instead of total boat, actually part of the way through, um, there was a uh, marine epoxy place down out of like Sarasota somewhere that I ended up ordering a lot of my epoxy from. And it was almost half the price as total boat. And it's been working great. I haven't seen any kind of a yellowing or anything like that, um, even though it's under paint. But you know what I mean? It doesn't look bad at all. Just as a recap, if you didn't see what the original boat <clears throat> looked like and what I had to go through to be able to do the demo on the boat, check out this video here. Um, and you'll be able to see how we went from this with holes all in it, sealed up by about five layers of paint, um, to this. Remember that I am not a professional. And if you have anything to add, or ways that I can improve, please drop me a line. I would love comments. Um, and if you like what you see and you want to keep up with the videos, please subscribe because it's fun.